force on dielectric in a capacitor. So it is seen that when you try to insert a dielectric inside a capacitor, the capacitor will pull the dielectric in. So where does that force appear from? So let's see this diagram. These represents the electric field lines which are going from positive terminal of the capacitor to negative terminal. And we are inserting the dielectric. So the dielectric will get polarized. So negative charges will come on the top and positive charges will come on the bottom. Now ideally the field lines are perpendicular to the plates. But in the fringe which is on the side of the edge of the capacitor, the electric field lines will be curved like this. So now let's just take one of these field lines here and let's take just one of the charges of the dielectric here. So one negative charge and one positive charge which is induced on the dielectric. So the field lines are curved like this from positive terminal to negative terminal of capacitor. So now you can see the direction of field lines is downwards. So the force on this negative charge will be upwards towards right. And the positive charge which is induced at the bottom that will be pulled in this direction. So by symmetry the vertical forces will be cancelled and net force on these two charges will be towards right. So similarly for all these negative charges they will be pulled towards right. So that is the reason for the force on the dielectric. So force on dielectric is due to the fringe electric field lines at the edge of capacitor that are not perpendicular to capacitor plates. Now we are going to calculate what is the value of that force. So we are going to take two particular cases. One is when the capacitor is isolated, it has some charge and it's there is no battery connected. And second case, the voltage across the plates is constant and then we are inserting the dielectric. So in both the cases we are going to find the force on the dielectric and our approach is going to be same. We are going to write u as a function of x. So u is the potential energy of the system and x is how much distance the dielectric has gotten inside. So the force f then we can find by du by dx. Because if I move this dielectric by dx amount the work by the system is fdx and that will be the change in potential energy of the system. So that's what we have done here. So second step f will be du by dx. So same approach we are going to try here also. We will write again u of the system. This time we have to take the battery also in the system. So that u again we will write as a function of x and then du by dx will give the value of force. So let's do that. Okay, so this is our capacitor plates. So the width of the capacitor plate is B. The distance between the plates is D. And let's say the length of the plate is L. So if this is X, this becomes L minus X. So we have inserted part of the dielectric inside. Let's say this is the region one. And the empty space, let that be the region two. So as discussed, our approach will be finding the potential energy of the system first as a first step and then differentiating it to get the force. So potential energy of the system. So we have two capacitors both in parallel. So C1 where the dielectric is present, there the capacitance is area into epsilon epsilon naught by D and area is B into X. This area on the top of the plate. Now for second region, it's B into L minus X. This is the area of this plate of the second region times epsilon naught by D. So both the capacitors are in parallel. So C equivalent will just add them and we'll get the value. Now we have got the C equivalent. So for the two cases, we are going to write the energy. So in first case, charge is constant, it's given. And second case, voltage is given. So if charge is constant, let's write the potential energy in terms of charge, which is Q square by 2C equivalent. 
and here we will write the potential energy as half c equivalent into v square because v is constant. So we put the value of c equivalent here which is a function of x in both the cases then we differentiate it with respect to x and here we are going to get the answer which depends on x. So in the denominator we are getting the value of epsilon x minus x plus l whole square. But here this term of c equivalent is in the numerator so the and it's the linear function of x so the force comes to be a constant. So here you can see as x increases as you put the dielectric more and more inside the force decreases. But here it doesn't matter the dielectric is one millimeter inside or it's completely inside the force is going to be same and its value is this. So once more I'll quickly recap why the force exists it's because of the curved electric field lines at the fringe. So we have two cases here when the charge is constant we are going to use our energy equation as q square by 2c and when voltage is constant half cv square and then we'll differentiate here v is constant and here q is constant and by differentiation we'll get the answer the force on the dielectric.